Hey guys, welcome back to the game development for Windows Phone tutorial. In today's episode, I'm going to give you an introduction to animated sprites by building out a simple class with which to handle this common task. This is something that a lot of frameworks support out of the box, and it's something that you'll be able to find lots of examples of around the web, but it's not included with XNA by default, and I think it's kind of a cool learning experience to build these things out for ourselves. So. Um, to do, introduce the idea of what an animated sprite is and how it works, I'm going to show you visually what we'll be implementing uh, in the code in a moment. So here I have four very similar looking copies of my Lander sprite laid out in a line, and it looks kind of like a film strip. Um, you'll notice that the thrust apart is slightly different in each frame. Now if we go from frame to frame and draw each frame in the same spot at the top here, the net effect is that we get an animation of the lander using its thrusters. And this is exactly what we're going to implement in the code. So with that, let's jump into some code. Um, you can see I've created this animated sprite class here in the graphics folder. Graphics. Uh, I've already set up all the properties that we're going to need. Uh, we have a texture that will hold the actual sprite contents, and we also tell the sprite how wide and tall each frame is. Finally, we have some fields that store the current state of the animation. Uh, so the current frame, total number of frames, whether we loop the animation, and so on. There's also some basic initialization code here um, that I won't go into as it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's implement some helper methods that will be used on this class. First, we want to be able to return a rectangle for the coordinates of the current frame. Um, so let's call this private rectangle get current frame rectangle. I have to excuse my typing, I've uh, got a fractured wrist right now. Um, and we're going to return a new rectangle uh, with the x coordinate of this dot frame width uh, times the current frame. Which should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, this advances the current frame along the film strip effectively. The y coordinate is always going to be zero at the top of the frame, and frame width and frame height should be uh, pretty straightforward. Like so. Uh, next we have a couple of control methods to stop and start the animation. I'm just going to paste those in here. Here's what they look like. We have play, which resets the current frame, sets playing to true, and resets this elapsed time thing, which we'll get into in a moment. Similarly, stop sets playing to false, um, and reset uh, just sets the current frame back to zero. Next we want uh, some way to draw the current frame to the screen. So let's make a method uh, for that. So let's call this draw. It's going to take a sprite batch, uh, a rectangle for the destination rectangle. This is where on the screen it's going to be drawn. And then um, a few other bits and pieces like color, revision, um, origin. The, re the reason we're including all of these is that we want this um, to be as flexible as possible um, in case we need to use some of these things down the line because um, I'm sure we'll be using animated sprites again in the future. Uh, so is that. Um, if it's not initialized then we'll return uh, and then we're going to say sprite batch dot draw. Um, obviously, this dot texture is the texture. Uh, the destination rectangle has been passed into us. The source rectangle. Now, this is the uh, basically where in the source sprite to pull uh, the actual graphical information from to be drawn to the screen. And obviously, this is going to line up with what we were computing up here with get current frame rectangle. So. That's exactly what we're going to put in here, this .get current frame rectangle. Uh, and then uh, we're just going to fill out the rest of these things that got passed in. Rotation, origin, effects, and layer depth, which you do not have to worry about at all right now. Um, and finally, we're going to need some code to uh, do the actual animation. So this is going to um, advance to the next frame 
um, after the allotted amount of time. So this will be called uh, update. It's going to take a game time uh, variable. So first let's check if we actually need to be animating. Uh, so we'll do if um, not initialized or not thing. So if any of these is true, then we don't need to be um, animating right now. So frame delay, invalid frame delay, this new equal to zero, or uh, total frames equals to zero. So if any of these are true, it doesn't really make sense for us to be animating, so we'll just return. Uh, next we're going to say, let's get the current frame time, which is game time, time dot elapsed time dot total seconds. So this is the number of seconds that have passed since the last time update was called. Um, and then we're going to uh, increment elapsed time since last frame by that value, current frame time. Now I'm going to explain this next piece of code um, in a little detail. We want to make sure to advance by the right number of sprite frames on each real frame, that is each frame that our whole game is going to render. Um, so we keep a running total of the time that has passed since the last time that we moved one frame in our animated sprite um, and we store that in this elapsed since last frame here um, and then we say if the time that has elapsed since we last moved a frame is longer than our animated frame delay then we want to advance to the next frame hopefully that makes sense um, so let's build this out here while well, elapsed time since last frame is greater than the frame delay. So this is saying if more time has passed since we last changed frames than um, the expected frame time, then we're going to uh, advance to the next frame. Um, so we say this start current frame plus plus. Uh, we're also going to decrement the elapsed time since last frame by the frame delay. And the reason that this is in a while loop is in case our animated sprite frame delay is really, really short, then sometimes a real game frame might take longer than the animated sprite frame, and we may need to advance the sprite by multiple frames. Um, so basically, kind of in a nutshell, we increase elapsed since last frame by the real game time up here, and then we decrease it in increments of animated sprite frame time and each time we do that we advance by one frame until uh, we don't need to advance any longer. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, finally we need some code um, to do the looping so let me just paste this in here because it's a little bit long. Um, so this says if we're at the end of our animation check if we need to loop the animation if so we just set the, fr the frame back to zero um, if we're not looping, then we stop playing and we um, just uh, break out of the loop there. Okay, I hope you're able to follow that. Uh, if not, just pause and read over the code again. Um, so now let's put this class to use. Um, you can see that I've already set up my film strip here in um, for the lander in landerthrusting.png. Um, it basically looks identical to the animation I showed you at the start of the video. Uh, let's go to our, I'll just save this, and let's go to our lander class next. Under our texture field, let's add an animated sprite object. Next, we'll create a method to initialize the sprite. Um, so public void initialize, initialize animated sprites and I'm going to pass this a texture 2d called thruster texture and then we just say lander thrusting sprite equals new animated sprite um, so I'm going to pass it that texture 
and the frame width and height of 80, a frame delay of 0.05 seconds, and I'm going to say true, uh, we do want to loop the animation. Uh, next in our interact method we'll start and stop the animation. Uh, where is interact? Here we go. Uh, so we say lando thrusting sprite dot play um, if the touch is being pressed and then if the touch is released then we say lando thrusting sprite dot stop like so. Uh, and then in our update method we're going to call update on our sprite. So uh, update game time like that. And finally, in our draw method, we'll either draw the original sprite or we'll pass the draw call down to the animated sprite. So if we'll add uh, an if statement here, if this.thruster.active, um, then we're going to call our animated sprite, otherwise we'll do what we were doing before. Like that. Oops. Uh, so if the, the thruster is active, then we say lander thrusting sprite.draw. Pass it the sprite batch, uh, this dot get screen, oops, dot get screen rectangle. So I'm basically copying um, what was down below here. Uh, so uh, let's just pass it color dot white. Um, rotation is this dot rotation. Origin, this dot get screen origin. Uh, sprite effects dot none and uh, layer depth zero. We can also remove um, this thruster dot active piece down here. Uh, just take that out. So it's uh, either red when it's dead or white when it's alive. Uh, because the if thruster is active, then it will be calling this, and this one it will be called, and that is the case. Uh, finally, we're going to wire up the initialize method in our game class. So, uh, in our initialize, no, sorry, load content, yes, in here, uh, we're going to say load sprites and level.lando dot uh, initialize animated sprites and then we're gonna uh, just load our thrusting texture so load texture 2d sprites lando thrusting oops just like that and uh, that's actually all we need to do. So let's run this thing and see how it looks. Here's our menu. Click through. And moment of truth, if I click to thrust, there we go. You can see the, uh, the thruster is animating in and out. Which sounds really dirty now that I think about it. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, we have an animated sprite. Anyway guys, that's it for today. I uh, hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.